going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another video for Dauntless. This is the fifth episode in a series of Dauntless weapon guides we're putting together in light of the game entering open beta. The last episode went over the hammer, but today we're turning our attention to something at the other end of the spectrum, a weapon for all the agile speed demons out there, the chain blades. Again, I want to thank the guys over at Phoenix Labs for very kindly sponsoring this series. We've teamed up to cover all five of the available weapons, and across these videos I'll be going over everything you need to know from the basic moves and combos, all the way up to some overarching weapon theory, so that way if any of you do plan to jump in and give the game a shot during the open beta, you'll be able to do so with good understanding of the weapons beforehand. Now, the chain blades are all about speed and mobility. Where the sword struck a good balance, offering both speed and burst damage, the chain blades take that to the next level and really do allow you to become a master of mobility. You can attack up close for fast damaging combos, extend your reach thanks to the chain and attack at range whilst also using the speed to dip into the elemental damage offered by your weapon, and what's more, at the press of a button you can both zip into combat and dash out like some sort of dauntless ninja. Your evade options are also different to that of any other weapon, allowing you to perform fast chain dashes that again allow you to zip in and out of combat, and also give the behemoth the runaround. They really are an incredibly fun weapon to use, so if speed and mobility are your thing, then the chain blades are where you want to be. Now, to begin with, as mentioned just a moment ago, the chain blades offer incredibly fast and agile combos up close, but thanks to the chain portion of the weapon, you also have the ability to attack at range. Your close range combos will form the crux of your bread and butter damage combos. Meanwhile, your ranged offerings are a good way to stack elemental damage more quickly. Remember that elemental attacks pile up over time, and once they hit a threshold, the effect will activate. So good use of this weapon will see you mixing and matching both options. To begin with, you have your basic X combo, the bladed edge. This is five consecutive X inputs. It's relatively fast, but given the short range nature of the actual blade itself, you'll need to be right up next to the behemoth to land your attacks. Of course, as with any weapon, you can dodge out of your attacks mid-combo should you need to, but with the chain blades, the main difference is that your dodge is actually this super fast dash that you can chain together. Keep in mind that the iframes, or the invulnerability frames, are a little bit different on the dash, so if you're used to dodging certain attacks to avoid being hit, you'll need to adjust your timing a little when attempting to do the same thing with the dodge. However, the speed of this move makes it great for both dipping into and out of combat, dash in, attack fast, and dash out. Your next combo is Chain Fling. This is three consecutive wide inputs, and this will perform a series of wide sweeping attacks. Now, back during the alpha, you used to be able to use this move to interrupt the behemoth mid-charge. However, sadly, that doesn't really work like it used to, so more broadly speaking, you'll be using this move to engage at range. If a behemoth is entering an enraged state, maybe it's kicked out some attacks to control the space around it, then you can use this to both attack and stack elemental damage. You can then combine both of these into a close range combo called Swinging Blades. Two X inputs into a Y input and then a final X input to finish it off. This will begin with your basic X flow, perform a wide spin mid combo and then round it out with an X finisher. Given the wide attacking nature of the spin, it's handy if perhaps the Behemoth repositions and perhaps your close range attacks are a little bit out of range. But again, it's also a way to work more elemental options into your combo. And then finally you have Blade Spin. After three consecutive X inputs, you can press and hold Y to perform this spinning attack. Keep in mind this consumes stamina quite heavily, so you can't do this indefinitely, but again, it's a great way to stack elemental damage. It's not a heavy damage combo on its own, but it's for sure something you can consider working in when you have an opening. Additionally, you can press X a final time at the end of that combo to round it out with the same finisher from the Swinging Blades combo. Keep in mind that much like all other weapons, you can also input either X or Y following your evade, which in the case of the chain blades is the aforementioned dash. Pressing X will perform a little up swipe and you can then link that directly into your core combo. Meanwhile, pressing Y throws your chain blades out in front of you. This is much quicker than the first Y attack. And as we'll discover shortly, this also has another great application. Then finally, the last part of the weapon are the chain pull and push. Located at the top of the screen is this meter. You have this arc meter at the top and these four nodes. The nodes are what you'll use to perform the chain pull and push moves. Pressing RB when you are away from the behemoth will throw out your chain blades like this. If they connect with the behemoth, you'll then pull yourself towards it, putting you in the perfect place and distance to begin wailing on it with your X combo. However, if you press RB when you're right next to the behemoth, you'll instead kick back and use chain push to get yourself out and basically put some distance between you and the target. Each time you use this move, it consumes one of the four nodes, but when you attack, it fills the meter, and each time that meter maxes out, your nodes are replenished one at a time. So attack to keep it full, and then RB to dip in and out. Now they both have value, but personally I prefer to save my meter more so for getting out. I tend to use my dash attacks to get in and dodge basic attacks, then when I really need to get out, I can use chain push. Also, something else you can factor into your combat rotations, but if you perform a chain push when your meter is full, 
i.e. all four nodes are ready to go, then at the same time as dodging out, you'll also do damage at the same time. Sort of like dropping a bomb at your feet before you duck out. It's pretty handy, but it'll only happen if all four nodes are full. Otherwise, you'll just jump out. Additionally, there is one more thing worth mentioning, and this is a little advanced technique for you. The chain pull, when performed on its own, is useful, but I'm sure you'll agree, the move itself is a tad slow. The animation sees you raise your blades, throw them forwards, and then pull yourself towards the enemy. Useful, yes, but it doesn't exactly flow as nicely as everything else, so that's where your ranged attacks come in. See, if you press RB, your special button, the second a ranged attack connects with the behemoth, you can pull yourself in off the back of the attack. This means you can be fighting your target, then mid-combo you can seamlessly pull yourself in close to dish up more damaging combos and then get back out after should you need to. Also, remember that Y attack that follows the dash, the cool scorpion-like get over here type move? The reason I said that was good is because it also ties nicely into this technique. Given the speed of it, you can very quickly and easily throw out your chain blades and pull yourself towards the behemoth to continue fighting. So this is for sure something you want to take advantage of when you want to close the gap. So, now that you know how the weapon works and you understand what the moves are used for, how do we tie it all together? Well, much like the other videos, I'm going to stitch together a few more extended gameplay clips to show you some more broad chainblade usage. Much like any hunt you've got to get stuck in to begin with, the chainblades are fast, so it's really easy to just get in, dish out the damage, and almost give the behemoth the runaround. Making good use of your dodges allows you to zip in and out at smaller distances than if you'd use the chain push, so it allows you to maintain a little bit more pressure. Personally, I tend to reserve my ranged attacks more so as a means to pull myself in closer, so I won't typically attack at range a lot of the time unless I'm forced to. I will, when I have larger openings, try and work in the blade spin to stack up elemental damage depending on my weapon, but outside of that, it's really just about sticking close and keeping up the pressure. A weapon like this deals damage through fast combos. It might not hit as hard as the axe or the hammer, but the speed that it attacks is really where you begin to make up the ground, so use that to your advantage at all costs. Also, the more you attack, the more likely you're going to have max meter most of the time, and that's something you want to maintain. The last thing you want to do is be in a position where you really need to chain push out and you have no meter. So attack fast, frequently, use dodges to evade and keep close to the behemoth, and then use the special when things get crazy. But that, my friends, is pretty much it from me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below if you have any questions. Also, keep it locked, since the last weapon tutorial will be coming this week. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.